woke up to a lovely meditative morning in Dorky village. After breakfast, we met West. He was the chosen one to take us for the Kudengram trek to see a living root bridge. <laughs> Oh, so sweet! Welcome to Meghalaya! The wettest region on earth! After your moms. <laughs> if you know it, you know it. A few minutes into the trek, my OCD started buzzing and I got a really trashy idea. So as we trek along, we see like little bits of trash. You know what, I think I'm gonna come like with a dustbin bag now when I trek. I'll just collect bits of trash, it's just so... I don't think you not leave it there, you know? It's like my OCD is digging in for the entire planet. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm gonna get dust in my right? track or whatever. We started off the trek with a few layers, which left us one by one. First and foremost, I got bare foot, and there were bits and pieces of human footprints along the way, which I used to cover my own. And look, they've left us. Something to put one shoe in at least. Okay, half a shoe. I'm a small man, but my motuche. <laughs> my rucksack had a mark. Let's see, this guy's about to use the warranty real fast. So, gali gali ne andar wuki dilu chika the. Ah yes, finally getting into total comfort. As it started to get hot, we decided to get proper comfortable. This time you know what's coming out. <laughs> I'm about to do this trek in such a rough form, you feel like I just came out of the womb. Just don't cry after that. <laughs> the rocks were actually quite cooling on my feet. The trees were covered with this golden hue all through the afternoon. They offered us shade for a good part of the trek. And then there were also parts where we were exposed to the glorious rays of the sun. As we trekked along, fresh water from the jungle was never too far. Refreshing. Halfway through the trek, we passed through a small village. I have the urge to spend as much as I can in smaller places that are further away from people because they could use the money more for sure. I end up buying many things that I don't need just to support them but it turns out this box of chocolates I bought supported me as I got to make many new friends as we walked along handing them out. Eventually, we passed through one village where they were building a church. I start handing out chocolates to the kids working at the church site. The women there were grateful and wanted to give me something in return. Pan. I don't eat pan with supari, but I obliged out of courtesy. What a cute moment. What did it taste like? Like there was a pandemic in my mouth. Pandemic up in here. That was uh, two puns. Call it a pandemic. Please like, share, subscribe for the hat of puns with the multilingual finish at the end. Thank you. Hello? Anyone there? Okay, sorry. I'm going to take a time out. At this beautiful tree house. The rest of the trek was eventful, filled with a variety of scenic places and a variety of terrains for my toes. After an eventful 15 kilometer journey, we finally reached the main reward of the pilgrimage, 
the living root bridge. Emphasis on living. The bridge was alive and I could feel it on my palms. The sound of the waterfall on one side and the nature all around us, it was just beautiful. I of course relished the opportunity to meditate there for some time. You can only see so much with your eyes, alas, quite minimal compared to what you can feel with your soul. And to this living beauty, my soul emanated the eternal words, Shorty, you so fine. On day 5, we visit the longest living root bridge in the world and interact with these beauties a lot more then, where I will tell you more about their history and the genius behind them. For now, we've just had a lovely day, interacted with all sorts of beautiful people and places, and now we are pumping Linkin Park songs courtesy of West in the car ride back to Doki. Yeah.